Hello, everyone. Once again, my name is Jordan Land from the Office of Global Initiatives here at Miami University. I am the Luxembourg Programs Coordinator, but this is not the Luxembourg-specific parent information session. I'm just uh, I'm just one of the ones on duty now to uh, to present this general study abroad information to everyone. I'm also joined by my colleague Carrie Strader, who works in the Office of Global Initiatives as well, and I'll pass it over to her briefly just to introduce herself. Hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Carrie Strader. I am a study abroad advisor here at Miami, and I work with all kinds of programs. So um, students going to our Luxembourg campus, but also students who are doing opportunities through third parties, other universities, and um, our short-term faculty-led as well. So we're hoping to just give you a general introduction to study abroad at Miami and, you know, the things that you should consider as your student goes through this process. Thanks, Carrie. And I would like to add on a technical note, if anyone has any questions at all, please type those questions into the chat function. We will record those questions and then address them at the end of the presentation. Okay, so what is study abroad? I know that um, you probably have an idea of what that looks like. Um, you probably have an idea of what that looks like, but what does it actually mean when you see it translated into the experience that your student's going to have both before they go abroad, while they're abroad, and after they return. So at Miami University, study abroad means an academic credit-bearing experience. They can, these experiences can vary in length from one week to one year. They can vary in credit hours from no credit hours to 16, 17, 18 credit hours, or even you know, 35 if they go for an entire year. And then the benefits of certain programs can also vary um, in the way that they um, assist your student towards graduation or developing specific um, career skills and things of that nature. At Miami University, we have three general types of program. We have our MUDEC programs, which are programs that take place at our Luxembourg Branch Campus, which is abbreviated as MUDEC. That stands for the Miami University uh, Dola Boys European Center. The next type of program that we offer are faculty-led programs. This is actually the most prevalent type of program that we offer, and about 65% of Miami students will go on a faculty-led program. But there are, there are actually over 100 of these faculty-led programs. So a, a, a distinction between MUDEC and faculty-led is that MUDEC is one program, whereas faculty-led denotes or means well over 100 programs that are offered in various departments at Miami University. The third type of program um, are collectively made up of exchange programs what, and then what we call global preferred and approved programs. These are usually, these are generally speaking considered non-Miami programs where students are going to earn transfer credit for participation and um, Carrie will talk a little bit about those programs a little bit later in the presentation. Okay, so to begin with, we will talk about what we offer at our MUDEC branch campus. Um, some of you may be familiar with the fact that we have just celebrated our 50th year of operation in Luxembourg. We are one of the oldest study abroad programs um, in, the, in the U.S. So I think we're very proud of that fact, and MUDEC remains the flagship study abroad program for the university and is something that Miami is looking forward to having another highly successful 50 years or more in front of us. We offer semester, summer, and year-long options, although I do, have to, to, I do have to say that the year-long option is becoming much, much, much less prevalent. And that is simply because even for majors, which you might think of as being very conducive to studying abroad, such as international studies or foreign language majors, even they very rarely have the opportunity to study abroad for an entire year because it's very difficult to sequence classes um, in such a way for a year-long study abroad program where your student would actually be able to graduate on time. So for students, so what we actually see more commonly than students studying abroad for a full year is we actually see students studying abroad on two separate semester-long programs at different points in their academic progression at Miami. The semester-long program um, at MUDEC is comprised mostly of Miami plan-focused coursework, so it's really great for underclassmen, particularly sophomores or first-semester juniors. But we do offer some major-related coursework 
in uh, various majors, but obviously given that, you know, just the physical limitations of the building, we don't physically have enough classrooms or faculty to offer courses in every single major. But um, it's not only, the curriculum isn't only focused on the Miami Plant Foundation. That is just to say that most of the courses are designed to be pre-approved to work in uh, various parts of the Miami Plant Foundation. The credits being earned are Miami credits and the students are paying Miami tuition. And uh, what's important to note about that is that there's no process to have the credits evaluated for transfer like there can be with other study abroad programs because the credits being earned are Miami credits. And the benefit of the program carrying along Miami tuition with it is that it's very affordable and students are able to use all of the regular Miami scholarships and financial aid on the program as well. So it's really great bang for the buck and his students are very interested in a fantastic semester of exploring Europe and seeing all corners of the continent, there's really not many better options that Miami offers, if any at all, than the MUDEC programs. And I would also like to, to do a, a shameless plug here and mention that we do have a MUDEC specific parent webinar on Thursday, January 17th, also at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Why would a student go to MUDEC? MUDEC is a great choice for students who want sort of the familiarity and comfort of going with a Miami group of students and with Miami faculty on a semester long program. But the interesting aspect of the MUDEC program, it, it kind of puts a different spin on the Miami experience because students are going to be able to interact with other Miami students that they almost certainly wouldn't have met otherwise. So you might have 10 FSB majors, you might have 15 history majors, you might have a couple of speech pathology majors, et cetera, et cetera, going on the MUDEC program. And they're all in this group together and they're all able to, to interact with and develop those friendships that they nece wouldn't necessarily have been able to do here um, in Oxford or in Hamilton or in Middletown. The, um, we do have a lot of opportunities for local community engagement that you don't necessarily see on other study abroad programs. Um, we have many avenues for um, engaging with locals in educational context, in service context, and in, uh, in, in just leisurely free time context as well if um, your student opts to participate in activities with students from the University of Luxembourg, for example. And another uh, positive aspect of the program is really just becoming a part of the tradition. It is a, a lifelong it becomes a lifelong interest for students who go on the MUDEC program, and that's evidenced by the fact that at our 50th anniversary, we had 700 program alumni travel to Luxembourg to celebrate, um, to celebrate that tradition. And the program has over 11,000 alumni that are all very passionate about continuing to maintain those relationships that they developed on the study abroad program as well. And with, um, you know, I don't want to take up too much of the presentation talking about MUDEX, so I'm going to, to move on from here. Um, but if you do have any MUDEX questions, we'll try to address those at the end of the presentation. So now I am going to talk about faculty-led programs, although it's not necessarily the ty type of uh, programs that I personally work with on a regular basis, but I do have, I have worked with faculty-led programs in the past and other positions that I've held. Important aspect to know about faculty-led programs are, are that just like MUDEC, these are Miami faculty teaching Miami courses. But a key difference is that these are short-term programs, usually um, either three to eight weeks in length, and they typically offer three or six credit hours. Very rarely are they going to offer more than uh, six credit hours. Um, we do need to let you know that faculty-led program offerings can fluctuate. Since these are led by faculty, faculty can sometimes have changes in their life circumstances that compel them to cancel a program one summer or winter term or to move it to, to another term, et cetera, et cetera. So what I always tell students, it's a good idea if they're thinking about a faculty-led program to put, start planning about a year in advance and don't necessarily plan two or three years in advance for a faculty-led program simply because those opportunities tend to fluctuate more than other types of study abroad programs. So a year is a really good time, um, to, uh, enough lead time to be able to effectively plan participation on a faculty-led program. We, uh, primar these programs are primarily offered during the summer or winter term. Most of Miami students will study abroad on a summer faculty-led program, but winter term is actually our fastest growing time of year to study abroad in terms of popularity. So there are a growing number of winter term programs at Miami, 
And I would say that Miami has more winter term offerings than the vast majority of institutions that are our size. And most of these faculty-led programs are going to involve taking one or two courses that are major specific. So the curriculum on these faculty-led programs is not very flexible because there will generally only be one or two specific courses offered, and those courses are usually going to be upper division uh, uh, courses specific to a major. Um, that can fluctuate um, sometimes. There are some faculty-led programs that are designed to fulfill the global perspectives requirement in the Miami Plan Foundation and may offer lower level courses that are open to a wide variety of majors, but that's not typically the case. Usually they are designed around with specific majors in mind. And just like with MUDEC, all federal and Miami aid can apply to, to these uh, summer faculty, summer and winter term faculty led programs. But, un, but the one key caveat there to know beforehand is that Summer aid and winter aid um, are considered part of the regular semesters. So if your student maxes out their financial aid in, in a fall or spring semester, they may not necessarily have any financial aid left available for that winter or summer study abroad program. But with MUDEC, since it is a semester long program, then students um, are often able to use their regu regular Miami and federal financial aid on, uh, on the MUDEC program. Faculty-led programs are really great for students who, again, find comfort in the familiarity of going with a Miami group of students. And a little bit different from MUDEC is that most of the time, these students are going to be going with other students they've had classes with in their major. So there's already, um, it's, it's usually kind of a, 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 tra a transplant of Miami uh, classrooms going on these um, faculty-led programs. Faculty-led programs usually have a heavy focus on a high degree of experiential um, activity within their short amount of time being abroad, and we make a deliberate effort to ensure that students are not just stuck in a classroom, that they're not just being lectured to for a few hours each day, and that um, our faculty have developed real, actual, beneficial, experiential activities for our students to engage in while they're on their faculty-led programs. Another aspect of, a uh, beneficial aspect of the Miami um, faculty-led programs are that you'll be paying Miami tuition, um, which sometimes means that you are able to use Miami scholarships to pay for those expenses, but that's not always the case. Um, it, it really depends on the program. So if your student ends up wanting to go on a specific faculty-led program, they need to explore funding options with um, their faculty advisor for the program, as well as staff in our office. Okay, so now I will turn it over to Carrie Strader to talk a little bit about our transfer credit programs. Hi, everyone. So transfer credit programs, it's kind of a catch-all. So this is for students who want to travel on a more individual basis. So maybe Miami isn't going to the type of location that they're looking for. Uh, maybe they want to delve into a very specific language. There's lots of reasons why students choose transfer credit programs. We have a very wide portfolio of partners that we work with that includes other universities, um, study abroad providers, so nonprofit companies who provide study abroad programs for American students. It can really look like a lot of different things. So the important thing to know that's different from the programs that's previously been described by Jordan is that these come back as transfer credits. So we always have a lot of questions about those. How do those apply to the Miami degree plan? And the answer is it depends. So your student absolutely can get major classes, electives in your major, even Miami plan classes, but we have our own transfer credit process that the student goes through. And so our office does provide lots of resources and help in that process. The student is not on their own. Most of the time, the student will get their classes pre-approved through each department. Um, so they know exactly how it's going to come back because we don't want to send a student on a study abroad program that is not going to apply and that will, you know, maybe set back their graduation. Um, so we work very hard with the students to make sure that those transfer credits apply. Um, global perspectives is one of the requirements of the Global Miami Plan. So that's six credits that students have to take to graduate and any six credits students take abroad count automatically for that requirement. So. That's a big bonus of transfer credit programs is there's no pre-approval process or petition for that specific requirement. It goes automatically to the degree plan. 
And like I said earlier, there's just a greater variety of courses and locations absolutely all over the world. So there's a couple different models within transfer credit programs. We have exchanges. So these are a very unique, this is actually kind of the oldest type of study abroad. Students pay Miami tuition and fees. And in some cases, they actually pay Miami room and board as well and get reciprocal dormitory or room and board at the university. That part depends. But essentially, you exchange spots with a student at a different school. Um, and so we have these exchanges all over the world. Some of our popular ones are in Japan, Scotland, Mexico, Finland, United, United Arab Emirates, and South Korea. Um, the South Korea one in particular is very popular for STEM and engineering students. Is that a great engineering university in Seoul. Um, so this is, you know, kind of straightforward in terms of billing, and um, you have that normal Miami tuition bill that you're used to getting. So it's very straightforward in that sense. Um, the student, you know, is going to be very independent in that, enrolled in that local university as a visiting international student. We also have what we call global preferred programs. So these are where students are going through a host study abroad provider, and that provider will set their own rates. So it could be as low as, you know, we have some partners who have semester programs for as low as $8,000, $9,000, including tuition and room and board. Um, you know, and it could go up to, you know, beyond what you're used to paying for Miami. It really depends on the program. The important thing to know for global preferred programs is that it's a designation that we give, and that means that your student can use all of their Miami scholarships. So that's anything that comes from Miami as an institution. If your student gets Miami Red Hawk Eminence, um, Bridges Scholarship, any feder federal aid, and any Miami scholarships will apply to that program. So that's something to keep in mind. If students have a significant amount of Miami scholarships and are looking at transfer credit, we encourage them to look at you know, either exchange or global preferred. Approved programs are students are where students go on programs where the credits will transfer back and you still pay that flat rate that the provider is offering, but those Miami Merit scholarships will not apply. Um, students can still use, you know, federal loans and financial aid, but it gets a little bit more complicated that Miami aid does not directly apply to that program. So what kind of students should look at transfer credit programs? Um, so I'm kind of splitting this up here in between exchange and global preferred because there are different models of study abroad. Exchange students generally are going to be abroad for at least a semester. Um, summer exchanges, January term isn't really a thing that exists. It's really a semester, sometimes even a full year. It really is for an independent student who wants to be, you know, kind of doing their own thing in that local university, maybe surrounded by students who are from that country. They might be the only American in a class. Um, you can take classes in English on exchanges. It depends on the university. Almost all of them offer classes in English, and obviously some of them are, one is in Scotland, and so all of the classes are in English there. Um, but it's also great if your student maybe is taking a foreign language, maybe majoring in a foreign language, and can really get that language immersion. Global preferred, there's different models, um, but most of the time students are gonna be taking classes mostly with other Americans. So that is just a different model. Um, and, you know, they might be taking classes at a study center that the provider has, you know, an office building with classes and, and they bring in faculty from that country. Or maybe they're doing a hybrid program where some of their classes are with other Americans and they take one or two classes at the local university in English. Um, but, you know, either way, the student's going to be surrounded by maybe non-Miami students and have a little maybe higher degree of exposure than they would have otherwise. So thinking about how to choose a study abroad program, it can be very intimidating um, when you look at kind of the list of programs that we have, there's so, so many choices. So what we encourage students to think about, and this is a great kind of starting point for you to talk to your student, is what do you want to achieve and what do you want to get out of study abroad? So we really think it's important to be purposeful and be bold when you're choosing a study abroad program. So thinking about things like, Am I comfortable traveling more as an individual, um, or do I w really want that comfort and the, that safety net a little bit that comes with going with a Miami group? How long do I want to be abroad? You know, we have students who sometimes will start out with going on a faculty-led program for a couple weeks, and then they discover that it's something they really enjoy, and then they'll go on for a semester later in their Miami career. We do have lots of students who go abroad more than once. Um, and a lot of students are, you know, skeptical of a semester at first, and then when they really start to think about it, they realize that that's going to be the best fit for them academically and actually financially because of how scholarships apply. The degree of immersion, so thinking about is your student interested in learning a language? Have they taken anything before? Um, even without the language skills, you know, you can still be really immersed in lots of different ways. 
and you know, to what level do you want to have that experience when you're abroad? Academics. So it is study abroad, education abroad. We think it's extremely important to find a study abroad program that's going to best fit the student's academic plan. So we want the students to be able to take classes that are going to be interesting for them, that will open new perspectives, that also can apply to their degree plan. So thinking about that. Location. Um, you know, does your student want to be in a huge metropolitan city? Does your student want to be in a tiny little town where they can live with a host family and go around town and practice their language skills? Um, there's something you know, in between those two poles, and there's lots of different options for location. So that's something to think about. And then language, like I said, um, that is always a consideration as well. Thinking about study abroad as professional development. So it's actually a great tool that your student can use as they're leaving Miami to go into the job market, to go into grad school. Um, there are really lots of soft skills that are learned during study abroad, problem solving, um, you know, being dropped in a, another country. Maybe you don't have the language skills. Maybe you don't have, you know, internet connection on your phone like you're used to and trying to figure out a transportation system and how to get around the city. And that, just that in and of itself is a very useful skill that they can use throughout their lives. Interpersonal skills also. Um, in almost every job interview I've been in, you have that question. Tell me about a time when you worked with somebody who was different from yourself or who came from a different background. And so study abroad is really going to place that student in a situation where, hey, everyone who's here is not from, you know, the three-state immediate area around me or, you know, from a, even the same country as me. And that can really broaden perspectives and develop those intercultural skills that are helpful in the workforce. And I'd also like, this is Jordan Land again, I'd also like to jump in and just add that there are specific fields and majors where it is almost, if not a requirement, then it is almost, uh, uh, it should be a requirement for students to study abroad. These would be fields such as international studies, foreign language majors, even poli-sci majors, history majors as well. Um, you can even sometimes throw in literature majors depending upon what the student's focus may be. So even, so there, again, you, there are soft skills that any student from any major can develop on a study abroad program, but, but there are other majors where studying abroad is a skill builder and it will really help them in a technical sense with entering into specific um, internationally focused career fields. And I, I, I tell students that come in for advising, um, and believe, believe it or not, you, it is surprising the number of students who are, say, French majors or Chinese majors, and they come in and, into the office and they actually aren't really motivated to study abroad or they don't really want to. And I tell them, look, if you're a foreign language major or international studies, et cetera, and you don't study abroad, it's like being a nursing major with no clinical experience. What even is that? So my, my point here is just, to um, reiterate that there are many different ways a study abroad experience can be leveraged to assist a student with obtaining their all important first job after graduation from Miami. So financial considerations, things to think about. We do encourage students to plan ahead. This is one thing that we will repeat over and over again. Um, the study abroad application process generally is done about two semesters ahead of time, ideally. Um, the applications will be about the middle of the semester before you want to go for most programs, but each program is going to have its own deadline that you need to be aware of. So that is something to think about, and especially as students start freshman, sophomore year perhaps, and they're kind of building that four-year plan of what their classes are going to be, it's essential that they really think about study abroad and how is that going to work in that plan. So that's a collaboration between a student, their academic advisor, and then they can come to us as well and we can kind of help fill in that gap with a program that's going to be a good fit. But the key is just to plan ahead because there are deadlines for each study abroad program, but then there's also deadlines for study abroad scholarships that can be before the program deadline. So that is something to really be aware of. Uh, making cost-effective choices. So for some students who have a decent amount of scholarship funds from Miami, it actually costs about the same to go on a semester-long study abroad program that's through Miami or is maybe global preferred than it would for them to do a, a shorter summer term program. Um, and you know, so there's different ways to find programs that are cheaper than others um, and still have them be really high quality and cost-effective experiences. Study abroad scholarships. So these can take many different forms. Miami um, is generous and has lots of its own study abroad scholarships students can apply for. The program that your student is doing likely has its own scholarships that your student can apply for. 
There are national study abroad scholarships on the U.S. level. There are study abroad scholarships through the country that your student is going to study in, in some cases. They're really all over the board. So we're going to show you our website in a little bit, encourage you to check that out. We do have a finances tab at the top of the website that explains kind of all of the scholarship options for study abroad. And financial aid. So again, a lot of this depends on your student specific financial aid package. Um, we can't, you know, pull that up right in front of us, but it is really um, useful to also be in contact with the financial aid office ahead of time to look and see how is this going to apply to this specific program. And that's something we work in tandem with the financial aid office on. And then thinking about study abroad as an investment in your student's future. So like Jordan was saying, it really is a time that students can develop these skills. Um, lots of students do internships abroad, that's becoming more and more popular, and then they have international work experience on their resume as they're going into um, the job market, which is really incredible. And it is something that I think is great to do in college. It's the perfect time in your life to study abroad and to explore. Um, you have the support of Miami, you have that financial support as well. Um, it really is the best time to do it before um, you enter into a full-time job and then have to take into account, you know, vacation time, things like that. Um, so thinking about it kind of in the long term as well. Okay, so this is Jordan again, and I'd like to just kind of walk through a basic overview of the study abroad application process. And one thing that should be noted as we have this discussion is that the exact process will change depending upon the type of program selected. So the exact application process will differ between the MUDEC programs, between faculty-led programs, and between transfer credit programs. So this is just a basic overview. And when your student makes, uh, wants to explore specific study abroad opportunities, we will help them walk through whatever relevant application process, process comes along with the program that they have identified. One of the most important things to start out by doing, honestly, is just going to our website and reviewing all of the information resources that are available. We have information resources um, available to help students from underrepresented populations in terms of making a decision about where and how to study abroad. We also have information resources regarding specific uh, uh, programs that might be relevant for specific majors, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so really the, the information available on our website is extensive and very helpful in allowing your students to gain an initial concept of what studying abroad looks like at Miami University. And uh, we do recommend that students have conducted at least some basic research on what might interest them in the field of study abroad. Uh, before they come in to speak with an advisor in our office. It's always helpful and it can uh, perhaps turn what would have been an hour long conversation into a 30 minute conversation or a 45 minute conversation if um, they've done some research beforehand. I think it's very important for students to begin setting goals and prioritizing what is important for them to gain out of their study abroad program. So I'm actually going to go back a couple of slides to kind of talk through what that might look like in terms of goal setting. This list here is actually a really great representation of what your student might want to prioritize or considerations when studying abroad and how to prioritize what's important to them. And when they work through the prioritization of these different aspects of studying abroad, that more often than not will lead them to a specific program or a couple of specific programs and help narrow down the, the hundreds of offerings that we have into specific and helpful opportunities for your students. So for example, is it more important for your students to study abroad for um, six to eight weeks in the summer session, or is it more important for them to go on a program that's going to help them the most in their academic progression at Miami? Or is location the most important thing for them? How important is language within the experience? We can help students walk through these different considerations, but this is what we're talking about when we're talking about preemptively goal setting for a student's study abroad experience. The next step is to go to advising, and there's two kind of ways that 
going, or th there's two ways in which a student may begin the process of obtaining advising services as it relates to a st study abroad participation. On the one hand, a student may, dis, um, may opt to begin their study abroad advising process with our office and our study abroad advisors, and that's an absolutely perfectly acceptable thing to do. The other way in which a student may begin to explore the study abroad process is to visit with their regular academic advisors in their regular academic departments. Whichever one, whichever a type of advising is first selected, rest assured that no matter what, those two types of advising are going to come together during that process and work together to help your student um, end up participating on a, on a relevant and uh, rewarding experience for them. After a program has been identified, usually with extensive advising assistance involved, the next most important, the next step in the process is to begin financial planning. It's very important to know what type of program your student is going on so that you can anticipate the types of scholarships or financial aid that are involved. It will also help you determine how you need to think about budgeting for this study abroad, for the selected study abroad program. So exchange programs are slightly different in terms of funding than, than uh, global preferred programs which are in turn slightly different in terms of funding structures than approved programs, which are different than funding structures for faculty-led, and so on and so forth. So those are all questions that we are, help, we are here to help you and your students wade through, um, but it does take a significant amount of planning on the part of the student and on your parts as well. And we're, more, we're here to help be a resource in that process rather than to necessarily um, specifically sit down and work through a student's um, budget A to Z on a personal level. Although, if a student is in need of that level of advising in terms of getting into the nitty gritty of their own personal budget, um, we definitely are more than willing to help out with that. Um, my, my point, my overall point is that it is a, an ongoing discussion and process in terms of financing and budgeting between our office, your students, and yourself, and we're always willing to participate in, in that process and answer any questions that you might have, um, especially about the different types of programs and how funding works and how paying and, 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 and paying the associated fees work as well, because those processes change depending upon the type of program selected too. The fourth step in the process would be to actually apply. So after the student has done research, after the student has come in for advising, after the student has um, worked through an extensive personal budget to really understand the, the financial impact of a program, the final step is to apply. And we generally recommend that students begin applying to programs around the sweet spot, in my opinion, is about nine months before a program starts or nine months before the desired uh, time of departure. Um, a, a year in advance is perfectly fine as well, but generally speaking, if a student starts planning a year in advance and then applies for a program nine months in advance, they are way ahead of the curve and they're going to be absolutely, um, they're, gonna, they're gonna be following a very, a, a less stressful progression in the process of studying abroad. However, there are a lot of programs, such as the MUDEC program and, and other transfer credit programs as well, that do have the ability to take students very late in the game. So as an example, for this, this coming spring semester at MUDEC, we were able to accept a couple of students at the end of November, which is uh, crazy late to be thinking about spending four months uh, um, abroad, but nonetheless, we were able to make that happen. Um, and so that's not to say that there aren't late ad opportunities if your student all of a sudden has a semester open up where they can study abroad. But generally speaking, we recommend that students begin planning 12 months in advance and then try to aim for applying to a specific program around nine months in advance of when they would like to depart. I believe that we have, yes, we have reached the end of the presentation. These um, beautiful faces at the bottom of this screen are our study abroad staff. I work there on the left, that, that's me on the left, uh, yes, the left, that's, uh, that's me, Jordan Land. Um, and next to me to the right is Erin Brandyberry, and she primarily works with our faculty-led programs. 
Next to her is Kevin Fitzgerald. He primarily works with transfer credit programs, including exchange, co-sponsored and approved. I'm sorry, global preferred and approved. And then next to Kevin is Carrie Strader, who is in the room with us today. And then finally on the far right is Carla Guinigundo, who is the director of our international partnerships, as well as our coordinator for scholarships. So we'd like to uh, thank everyone today for attending this webinar. We hope that it was very informative, and now I think we'll begin working through some of the questions. And uh, judging by the number of cards that have been placed in front of me, I think we have a, a large number of those. So just bear with us as we read through these and process these and, uh, and then try to formulate some answers. Um, so you're going to hear a little bit of silence from us now while we work through some of these initial questions. Just one moment. Thank you. Okay, so the first question that, that has, uh, that, that's here um, in front of me is it seems that we've had a lot of questions about major specific opportunities or what programs students in specific majors should target and focus upon. And for, uh, to be honest with you, there's so many opportunities that are here at Miami, um, and there are so many majors here at Miami that it's really impossible to offhand provide specific programs that'll be around even when your students are um, wish to study abroad. So our best piece of advice is that if you have specific program offering questions, just shoot an email to the general study, ab um, study abroad email account um, that you can get, get on our website or back here on this contact us page, and then we'll have the appropriate advisor respond with some potential opportunities that are available to your students. I'll start with our first question here. A parent asks, can students go to MUDEC, to our Luxembourg campus during January term? So we do not have a Luxembourg program over January term that's offered kind of as, you know, a general Luxembourg program. However, sometimes faculty-led January programs will use the Luxembourg campus. So I know that sounds like, you know, a kind of a different distinction, but that is something to note. So sometimes, you just need to actually search for the winter term programs that are going to be offered next winter, and there will be occasionally some programs in Luxembourg. Um, but, you know, they'll focus on a specific topic. So sometimes it's uh, European sports is one that has been there for, before, for example. Um, so there is not a kind of classic Luxembourg program, but the student can sometimes still go to Luxembourg in January on a case-by-case -case basis for that winter term. And this is Jordan again. I have a question here about the spring or potential for a spring 2020 program in Barcelona, um, and the student is a finance major in FSB. So the FSB Barcelona spring program is FSB preferred. So what that means is that regular scholarships and aid would apply to that program. If students have specific questions about the Barcelona FSB program, um, or any other FSB program, this is also a great opportunity for me to note that FSB is different than any other college on campus, and they actually have their own study abroad office that um, is completely separate than ours. And they are the best resource to be able to answer program-specific questions, um, such as with the FSB Barcelona program. They are located in room 1022 in FSB, and I do recommend that your students visit with them um, if they have questions specific to an FSB program. They'll be able to answer all of the questions about cost, tuition, um, working within the major, and that sort of thing. And then for all other majors, um, those questions would be best addressed to our office. You can also Google FSB Global Programs, and it will take you to the FSB Study Abroad website, and that's um, also how you can find contact information for FSB Study Abroad Office. A parent asked for advice for student athletes who have to go abroad for their major but are limited on when they can go. So it would depend on the specific student's major. 
I have a feeling if this student is an international studies major, departments do have their own requirements. So I, and as, as far as I know, for international studies majors, they have to do at least 12 credits abroad, which is typically um, a full semester load. There also are some short-term summer programs where you can really pack in those 12 credits. So I would encourage the student to come in for an advising session. Um, student athletes often will study abroad during the summer or winter term. So that's kind of a way that they can go and not have to jeopardize you know, their training or their scholarship, obviously depending on what sport the student plays. Um, you know, you'll have to keep in mind training schedules and things like that. Um, but student athletes definitely can study abroad. It just tends to be more on those short-term programs. And for that student who has that requirement, I would encourage them to talk to their academic advisor and to come into our office for advising. And I'd also like to add on to that regarding student athletes. The athletics department has actually reached out to me to explore the possibility of offering a one or two week long um, uh, summer, short term summer program for student athletes at the MUDEC branch campus. And that's um, currently in the pipeline for a potential debut in summer of 2020. So that's a specific opportunity that you may want to keep in the back of your mind that wouldn't impact the, um, the, your student athletes training schedules or anything like that due to the short term nature of the program, which is one of the reasons why the athletics department wanted to explore um, a one to two week offering um, so as not to impact training schedules. And I have an interesting question here and um, for that's related to utilizing post 9-11 GI Bill benefits to study abroad. The question is an out of state student is using post 9-11 GI Bill to attend Miami University which makes them in-state in terms of um, uh, studying at Miami for regular semesters. If they wanted to study to pay out of pocket for a summer abroad, would they still be considered in-state or out of state? Well, in order, in order to be considered in-state, they would need to be applying their post 9-11 GI Bill benefits to the study abroad experience. And post 9-11 GI Bill benefits can only be applied to uh, faculty-led programs or the MUDEC semester long program. Um, and I think it's the jury's still out on whether or not they can be used for exchange programs. Um, I'm not sure on that one, but I'm, I'm, but I do know that they definitely can be used for um, summer faculty led workshops. And um, the one caveat there is that the GI Bill benefits cannot be used for any of the transfer credit programs, the global preferred or um, approved. So that, that's just a distinction to make there. So as long as your student is going, is going on a Miami program, a fa whether it be faculty-led or MUDEC semester program, they can apply their post-9-11 GI benefits to the tuition charges, which would then also apply the additional benefit of that student being considered in-state. And I also would like to add to all of that that um, post 9-11 GI Bill benefits and how they apply to study abroad is a very, very tricky subject that virtually no one knows much about, even the VA. And to whomever answered uh, or asked that question, you can probably echo um, those sentiments. The only reason that I know what I've just said there um, or previously is because I used to be the uh, study abroad advisor at another institution specifically for students wanting to use VA benefits to study abroad. So if anyone has any questions about post 9-11 GI Bill benefits and how they apply to study abroad, even if they're not going on the Luxembourg program, I do recommend that they contact me uh, because I do have some experience working with that very tricky subject. All right, so just a general reminder for everyone as well that this has been recorded and will be available online as well as all of the slides being accessible. So don't feel like you need to jot down all of these notes or all of our contact information it will be available at a later time. Someone did also ask how you get access to the study abroad site. So that is a key resource. I would really encourage you to check out our website which is miamioh.edu slash study abroad that will take you to our main website. Um, lots of people would like to start with one of two places. One is our program search. So another question that we had was, how do you tell which programs are global preferred? So that's the programs where you can apply that Miami Merit Scholarship, for example, versus approved. Um, and the program search is actually home to our entire database of programs, Miami and non-Miami. And that's where you will see those distinctions. So you can search for only global preferred programs, for example. Um, and if you pull up a specific program, it'll say,
say program type, global preferred, approved, exchange, faculty-led, et cetera. And so that is how you can know. And we also have a breakdown of kind of to remind you of the descriptions of all of those different program types on our website. So again, miamioh.edu slash study abroad. And we had another question about scholarships and, you know, kind of the qualifications and considerations for scholarships. So each fund has its own um, requirements for the scholarship. Some of them are merit-based exclusively. Some of them are need-based exclusively. Lots of them are a combination of two of those. Um, the Farmer School of Business, for example, has its own study abroad scholarship funds. Um, that you can find on the Farmer School of Business website. That was another question was, sorry, we were using the lingo FSB, is, stands for the Farmer School of Business. Um, so that is uh, the business school here at Miami. So that is also a resource that you can look at for scholarships. And again, the financial tab at the top of our website. Okay, so some further questions that we've had to an that we'll answer um, now. So uh, one question here is how, um, how is it possible to locate a faculty-led program within a specific major? The easiest way to do that would be to go to our website and go to the program search function and search in the uh, select the academic area or the major of your student, and it should, the search should result in a program that is entitled Miami University in dot, 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 whatever, whatever that might be. And uh, you'll see, and by doing, by completing that search, you should be able to find what faculty-led programs are being offered for a student's specific major. And I would say that on average, most majors have at least one, if not one or two, or if not two faculty-led options, but some majors don't have any faculty-led program options, although that's uh, fairly rare here at Miami. It is, it, it, I just wanted to let you know, let you all know, that it could be possible that your student's major doesn't have a faculty-led program, and then that probably means that in any case, they'd either be going to MUDEC, going to MUDEC, or on a transfer credit program. So I have a couple questions regarding faculty-led programs at Miami, particularly the financial aspect. So someone asked, is travel included in the tuition for faculty-led? So our faculty-led programs, and you can see kind of the cost breakdown on our website in the program search if you're looking at our faculty-led, but there's essentially two main types of cost. So there is the tuition and fees, that's paying for the credit hours at Miami, just like you normally do, and the program fee. So the program fee is what pays for housing, um, some meals when you're there, um, entrances to museums and activities, um, transportation perhaps between different places in the country when you're there on site. Um, it sometimes includes flights uh, on very few programs. It does include a flight, and if it does, that will be marked. If it does not say, it, you can just assume that it does not include travel. Um, so it is most likely not including the flight, but um, please do read through the costs um, specifically to look at each program. And another question was, do we pay Miami tuition for faculty-led? So yes, you're paying Miami tuition. We do have an in-state and an out-of-state rate for Miami tuition on faculty-led programs, although it's important to note that out-of-state students do pay a reduced rate um, per credit hour for faculty-led programs. So it is slightly discounted, and you can see that whole total on each specific faculty-led uh, profile on our website. Another question here, do MUDEC classes change from year to year? The answer to that is both yes and no. So on the one hand, we do have, I would say, about 10% of our total class offerings will change from year to year, but then 90% of the classes that are offered at MUDEC will be consistent um, over the course of multiple years and rarely change. A couple other quick, que uh, quick questions about faculty-led programs. So one question was, do non-need-based financial aid apply to Miami faculty-led programs? So I assume uh, the, the parent is perhaps asking about merit scholarships. So merit scholarships from Miami do not apply to summer or winter faculty-led programs. Those can only apply during the semesters, unfortunately. Um, that is just a condition of those scholarships. However, if you have a loan package, that can often be shifted around to apply to summer and winter terms. Um, so that is something where you would need to go and talk to the financial aid office specifically about that situation. Um, we also had a financial question about 529 funds. 
used for Miami and non-Miami trips. As far as I know, I am not an expert. 529 funds can be used for study abroad as long as it's college credit bearing, in my experience from what I've heard from students. Um, the financial aid office can give a definitive answer on that, but I believe that is the case. And another question, is there a minimum amount of time that needs to be spent abroad in order for a student to fulfill Global Perspectives on a study abroad program? Global Perspectives is completely contingent upon completing six hours abroad, so it doesn't have anything to do with the length of time and only has to do with the number of credit hours. If a student goes on a program and they take six credit hours, um, they take six credit hours of, in any subject in any country, then those credit hours can uh, come back to Miami and apply to Global Perspectives. Of course, there are other considerations at play there and how that might actually work for your specific student. So for example, if they um, are going on a program that offers six credit hours and they want to fulfill Global Perspectives and another Miami plan requirement, they may not be able to do that because you cannot double dip courses between Miami Plan Foundations. So that's a caveat to the general answer that the length of time abroad does not matter. It's only about how many credit hours are taken in order to fulfill global perspectives, which require six credit hours. Um, one specific question that came in here that I can answer real quick, they were asking about the Kent State program in Florence. Um, and if they're paying Kent tuition or if that is a global preferred or approved program, um, I can confirm that is a global preferred program. So a student's Miami scholarship will apply to that program at Kent State. Um, we also have a question about um, how if students go on, excuse me, sorry, um, winter programs for 2020, so that would be kind of, you know, the next upcoming winter application cycle, when should you apply? So the winter deadline, it depends on the program, but generally it's gonna be around September 15th for winter term programs, which means they would wanna look at that September 2019. Um, but those programs usually are not released until March or April. Um, so, you know, they go through a proposal process, things like that. So I would keep an eye out in March or April for those winter term programs to be published. And then again, the deadlines are going to be around September. We have a question here about GPA requirements for studying abroad. The Miami, the overall Miami requirement is that a student be in good academic standing when they apply to study abroad. So whatever GPA that they have is, it, it's, that's not so important as it is just to ensure that the student is in good academic standing. However, specific study abroad programs will have specific GPA requirements and those will vary widely. The lowest GPA requirements I've seen have been 2.0, and the highest that I have seen have been 3.3. And um, those are, you know, I've, I've, seen, um, I've seen those GPA requirements vary from faculty-led program to faculty-led program, vary from transfer credit program to transfer credit program, and vary exchange program to exchange program. Generally speaking, in my experience, exchange programs tend to have the highest GPA requirements and also typically will require junior standing or higher. Um, so if the student is wanting to go on an exchange program in the future, then I would recommend that they maintain a 3.0 GPA and shoot for some time during their junior year or later. Something to consider as well along those lines for admission is disciplinary history at Miami. So that is something that we do check throughout the study abroad process and students will need to take that into consideration. So. Um, you know, their specific situation, if there is something that is on their disciplinary history at Miami, that's not necessarily going to automatically, you know, keep them from studying abroad, but it is almost always going to be on a case-by-case -case basis. So that is something to consider. And um, sometimes students will have to go through an interview process or things like that to kind of move forward. So that really just depends on the student's situation. Um, but that can also be looked at in the scholarship process as well. Um, a question about, Miami, non-Miami programs. And so can for student, out-of-state students, can non-Miami programs be less expensive due to the fact that you would not be paying out-of-state tuition? And the answer is yes. Um, so if you're working with one of our external study abroad partners, they are going to have a flat rate um, that is not based on residency to any particular state. And so 
the student is going to pay that flat rate, and often that flat rate is cheaper than out-of-state tuition at Miami. So that is kind of a case-by-case -case basis that you can keep in mind during your research for programs. I, I, another question we have, is there a study abroad preparatory class? There are, all programs will have pre-departure orientations during which oftentimes they'll cover material that you would, that, that is relevant to preparing the student to participate on a specific program. If the student's going on the MUDEC program or going on a faculty-led program, then those sessions will be conducted by faculty, or in the case of MUDEC, they'll be conducted by me. Um, if they're going on a transfer credit program, then there isn't necessarily a strict pre-departure orientation process. It'll vary from transfer credit provider to transfer credit provider and exchange institution to exchange institution. Typically speaking, in my experience, the pre-departure preparation that exchange partner universities provide is typically on the low end um, because they, they have a little bit less administrative capacity to dedicate staff to, um, you know, flying to the U.S. to orient students who are going to attend that host institution. So that's another reason why we recommend exchange programs to the most independently minded students. Um, a quick question here. Is it possible to get lab science credits abroad? So yes is the short answer, um, but the student will also want to check with the department that they're trying to get that credit in, kind of through that pre-approval process. Um, it's absolutely possible to get that. Um, some students do really advanced research um, while they're abroad, and that can transfer back as independent studies, it can transfer back as honors experiences, capstones, all kinds of things, um, but that is really going to be on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, so I have a question about the website. So when you're trying to get into the website, you get to a certain point where it asks you to do a, a Miami login versus a non-Miami login. Um, so that's only if you're actually in the application itself. So parents and others can just go on our website and click program search and look through all of the program landing pages without having to log in with a Miami ID. So the only t point in time when you need to log in with a Miami ID is when you're starting an application. And in that case, that would be the student's own login ID. I have a question here asking about the existence of study abroad uh, preparation checklist. Those are definitely available, but we don't have any general information about that on our website because so much will vary depending upon location, upon program, upon provider, upon uh, cost upon um, um, and, and will depend upon the time of, time of year that they're trying to study abroad, et cetera. So given that there are so many variables there, there is not a one-size-fits-all pre-departure preparation checklist, and, but I can say for sure that whatever program your student ends up committing to, there will definitely be a, an extensive checklist provided so that they can make sure they're very well prepared to participate in the program. Okay, and uh, another question that we have here is that, uh, is do students abroad on Miami programs still pay Miami fees? The answer to that question is generally yes. And, and so the way that the fee structures are set up here at Miami University is that you have what's called tuition and general fees. It's lumped into one, um, into one pot, they're inseparable. And within those general fees are things like the Armstrong Student Center, and the Goggin Eye Center and things like that. Those are not, those are fees that, I know it might seem counterintuitive, but those are, um, those are tuition and general fees that are lumped together in such a way, they're built in such a way into the fee structures of the university is, is so that they are inseparable. Um, so the answer to that question is yes. However, there are some auxiliary fees that are not charged when students study abroad on uh, uh, study abroad on Miami programs as well. So there are some Miami fees that are associated with studying abroad on a Miami program that students will pay, and then there are other auxiliary fees that are not that are able to be removed because they aren't built into the um, the tuition and general fees sort of pot of funds. 
Um, for students on non-Miami programs for semesters and for short-term programs, there is a $175 study abroad fee that covers the services that we provide while and you know after and before the student is abroad. Um, but if they are on a non-Miami program, that is the one fee that they will be charged by Miami for that term. And last question, uh, just to wrap up, thank you so much for being patient with us. Um, so someone asked, do faculty-led programs include host family experiences? So uh, yes, they can. It really depends on the program. Some are exclusively in you know, hotels or hostels, but we also have lots of faculty-led programs that have students in a home with a host family. So it really depends on the program, and that's something that the student can look for in the description, excuse me, of each program. Okay, that uh, wraps it up with our questions today. Thank you so much for spending this time with us. I hope you um, learned something about study abroad at Miami, and please know that we are at your disposal. If you have any further questions, you know, encourage your students to come in and talk to us as well when they're back on campus, and um, have a great rest of your day. Thank you.